On October 11, 2004, Nickelodeon brought to life five kids who went on awesome adventures in their backyard. This show would grow to be infamous as one of Nick Jr.'s most beloved shows, known as the Backyard Kids. But before you serve the steak, you have to kill the cow. So, let's take a look at that cow before it became the awesome series known as the Backyardigans. This is the mystery of me and my friends. Hi, I'm Pablo. My name's Tyrone. I'm Uniqua. I'm Tasha. My name's Austin. I don't know how much of that I can show without it being copyright striked, so I'll just cut to the chase. Backyardigans was a Nick Jr. show that launched in 2004 and ran for 9 years and 4 seasons. This show actually ran pretty strong and gave us some pretty amazing memes. What the fella gotta do around here to get some apple juice? Regardless, the Backyardigans had an impact on my childhood, and maybe yours too. I was a young 2000s kid, so I grew up with these kinds of early childhood shows along with other gems that shaped me into the person I am today. The Backyardigans focused on five kids going on some pretty cool imaginary adventures like being cowboys or knights and learning lessons along the way. The main characters were Pablo the Penguin, Tyrone the Moose, Austin the Kangaroo, Tasha the Hippo, and Uniqua, which was no specific animal, hence her name being Unique. Pretty rad, right? I thought she was like an ant or something. The series was created by Janice Burgess and ran for 80 episodes, each episode having a runtime of a standard 22 minutes. The series also follows a bit of a musical format involving a song in the episode apart from the intro, which is a real banger if I'm going to be completely honest. Music was composed by Evan Lurie, who worked on a number of different things other than the Backyardigans, even working on another Nick Jr. show called Oswald. He was an octopus. The show was pretty baller to be honest, but it wasn't always like this. Isn't that fascinating? They were live action. This clip was released and everyone flocked to this mysterious two seconds of footage. If you take a look, the eyes move. If that isn't creepy, look at the background. This was originally filmed in the Nickelodeon Studios Florida and was completed in September of 1998. The whole pilot pitch was shot down by the network, probably because this looks low-key disturbing with the weird lighting and the props. Honestly, the newer animated version looks way more kid-friendly. Seven years after the pilot was completed, Nickelodeon Studio Florida was shut down due to letting go of a large portion of the staff, which as far as I know had nothing to do with me and my friends, but I like throwing in a little bit of fun facts to spice things up. It should be noted that there were a bunch of other big changes in this pilot other than the recording process. It was not called The Backyardians, it was called Me and My Friends. There are four characters in this clip, Pablo, Uniqua, Tasha, and Tyrone. Austin is nowhere to be seen, and in fact, was never a part of the pilot to begin with. This is why he's referred to as the new kid on the block, since he was new to the series and didn't know the characters prior to quote-unquote moving there. The pilot also included a group of characters called the Meerkats. Their roles were unknown, but there were three of them. Omar Meerkat and two unnamed ones. Honestly, I feel like I resonate with these because, you know, just look at those faces. The four main characters also had a few different designs, such as stripes of Tyrone's shirt being yellow and blue instead of red and blue, Uniqua also having visible nostrils, so now she kind of looks like a pig, Pablo's hat is a different color, and Tyrone and Tasha's nostrils are completely different. This piece of media has never been seen by the public, and only known public footage of it is that clip, which is only like 2-3 to three seconds. Even more limiting is the fact that the video has no audio to go with it either, so that's a bit of a drag. Some people don't even know if Nickelodeon even has the footage of the pilot. Since the original recording studio was shut down, the only place it could exist is with the creators or within Nick's archives. The first thing I looked for was Nick Animation and sent them an email. That was literal weeks ago and no response. So then I had a new goal, the puppeteers. You see, there had to be actors who played the roles of the Backyardigans, people who were actually in the costumes, but since they're unknown, I have no idea how to get to them. I tried to contact the company who allegedly made the suits, yet I got no response. But, remember the characters I mentioned called the Meerkats. They were actual puppets, and their puppeteers are actually known. 
I set out to contact the three puppeteers. I emailed all three people in one afternoon and waited. Within the same night, I got an email from the agent of Jennifer Barnhart, one of the Meerkat puppeteers. She said she would forward my email to Miss Barnhart, which ultimately made me happy. About a couple of hours later, I had gotten back from the convenience store to buy bread to make grilled cheese, and I had an email from another puppeteer. This made me even more happy. The email was from Rick Lyon, a very famous man in the puppeteer business. This is what he had to say. Tyler, that photo is from my website. Yes, I worked on it. Yeah, prior to this, I had actually sent him a picture of the meerkats, and it was the same thing that was on his website, and I kind of feel dumb. Kind of, yeah. I don't think I'd call it Lost Media. It was an in-house pilot for Nick. It never aired publicly, so it's not really lost. Yes, it was essentially a live-action puppet and costume character version of what became the animated series The Backyardigans, but the meerkat characters did not get used in The Backyardigans. That was many years ago, so I don't remember much more th about it than what's on my website, which is very little. We shot it at a now-defunct Nick Studios in Florida. I never saw the finished product. All best, Rick. Wow, I feel like an idiot because I sent him a photo of himself. The same photo that was on his website. I didn't even think to explore his website. So that's a big brain dummy moment. But what he said is very intriguing. He said that he never saw the finished project, which means that maybe the other puppeteers didn't either. The fact that it was many years ago also meant the chances of people remembering it were slim, but regardless, I kept my hopes up. I still had two other gears of this machine to rely on, and I wasn't stopping here. Fast forward into later that night. I'm laying in bed, finishing up some online school assignments when I get a Discord notification. I checked in the Lost Media Discord to see that a channel, which I am a very big fan of, is offering to help me. That channel is L Supersonic Q. He had actually done a video about the subject, which unfortunately was taken down, but I've linked a re-upload in the description, so obviously I was ecstatic. He explained how past searches have gone, but provided a lot of information. I researched it a lot and made a video that I posted to my channel back in 2018. Most of the information available only came from the Backyard Against Wiki, because not much is known about it, aside from the short clip in the Nickelodeon Studios Florida video, which you've probably seen already anyway. Rick Lyon was contacted by a lot of people and, as you know, confirmed he doesn't have it. I tried to contact Janice Burgess, who created the show, but I couldn't find her contact info anywhere. The studio that made the costumes called Yvette Helen Studios or something similar, but I don't think they had any traces of that in their archives. So I think currently the only suspected place where it could be is inside Nick's archives based on a small award plaque that could be seen in an image of Nick Studios, proving that they valued it to some extent. There's also this controversial thing that happened with someone who worked on the CGI pilot where someone sent him death threats and his lawyer got a copyright strike on my channel until I took the video down as it was suspected to be the source of the threat. I don't know who that employee is since I was never able to find him and I don't believe he worked on me and my friends pilot specifically, but keep in mind there's someone out there who will probably get very defensive and angry if you end up finding him and asking him about anything Backyard Against related. Imagine how pitiful you have to be to send death threats about the Backyardigans. Anyways, this provided a lot of information for me since past explorations have turned up nothing. However, the idea of contacting people who worked on the CGI show interested me. Obviously, I wasn't going to send them death threats because who the fuck actually does that, but I had a new idea in mind. I thanked L Supersonic Q for his contribution and proceeded on. The next person I decided to contact was director Mike Shell who was a director for the first and second season of the Backyardigans. I shot him an email and continued looking for people to contact. About an hour or so later, I received an email from one of the Meerkat Puppeteer's agents, the one for Jennifer Barnhart. Unfortunately, she wouldn't be able to be of much help, as she had no recollection of the project. Wah, wah, wah. Another dead end. I began to search more, but it was hard to find people who worked on this stuff. I would reached a point where information on the Wikipedia for the Backyardigans couldn't help me, so I shot over to IMDB to take a look at who was available. I found somebody named Mick Paul Smith and shot them an email. However, I wasn't done yet. You see, I had been writing the script for a month and decided to just kill a whole nest of birds with one stone. God, that is morbid. I knew that even contacting just one person would be a long shot, but I'd have to risk it. Later on during the day, I received an email from McPaul Smith stating the following. Hello Tyler, I don't know much more about me and my friends than you do. I do know that the idea and characters were created by Janice Burgess, who was then a production executive for Nick Jr. 
I was working at Nickelodeon from mid-1998 on. My job was editorial director for on-air promotions. So I knew Janice and her boss, Brown Johnson. But I never knew me and my friends existed until 2001, or maybe it was late 2000, when they decided to make an animated version and asked me to script the pilot. Later, I took a year off from my quote-unquote real job at Nick to be head writer for season one of The Backyardigans. Then I continued to write lyrics for subsequent seasons after I went back onto the on-air promos department. But that's all Backyardigans info, not me and my friends info. Um, what else? I believe Janice had already decided to change the show's name to The Backyardigans by the time she told me about it in 2000 or 2001. So, I didn't even know they shot in Orlando, but that makes sense. It's fun to see those images. I'm not sure what that last shot is with the three puppeteers holding the three characters, but they don't appear to be the Backyardigans, slash me and my friends characters. I do know that the middle puppeteer in that photo is named Rick Lyons, and he did a lot of different puppetry on Nick's shows. I don't know any other people. Sorry I can't be of more help. Good luck! This did interest me, as we do know the show's name was changed. I also decided to do some work on Brown Johnson, Janice Burgess's boss. It turns out that she worked on Sesame Workshop, so it was pretty probable that she had some sort of involvement on the pilot. I emailed the only public email I could find, that being the Sesame Workshop, hoping that they would respond. Now all I had to do was wait. Dear Tyler, thank you for reaching out and thinking of Sesame Street. We are honored that you would think of us to assist in your research project. Unfortunately, Brown Johnson no longer works at Sesame, so we cannot help with your request. We wish you all the best on your project and the rest of your semester. Best of wishes, the Sesame Workshop Speakers Bureau. Wah, wah, wah. Will you cut that out? It's been almost two months since I've started this investigation. I've contacted tons of people who could have possibly been involved, but with no results. I even contacted a supposed email of Janice Pregas, but still of nothing. What does it mean for something to be lost? Never to be found, but once in possession. I discussed this topic with a bunch of people during this video, such as friends, colleagues, people who worked on the backyardians, and even family members who had no clue what I was talking about, and came to a realization. CGI and live action are two completely different departments. There's no way that any animators could help, or storyboard people. There would only be two groups who would help, editors and creators, and the music department, which, as we know, Mick Paul Smith knew nothing about. This is a piece of Lost Mina that's 20 years old, and everyone who has worked on it is unknown. I personally prefer it lost. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I'd love to see it, but I find this situation rather poetic. Plus, it's a lot more fun searching for it. This was all about the journey rather than the destination. I mean, I got to meet so many interesting people along the way, and it rocked! As for me and my friends, I think it will remain lost for a very long time. But if you wish to go out and find it yourself, do it soon, because the timer on this is running low. A project like this only gets older as the days go. So, get searching. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and consider subscribing. It's free. You can also click the little bell icon to be notified of my next upload. Drop a comment, too. Feedback is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace!